Welcome to Azor, the Banhammer. As far as opening hand, I'll, I'll tell you why I'm laughing here in a second. As far as opening hand goes, yes, we're going to keep it on this one. I like it. Uh, we have Supreme Will. We have Snapcast. We're just going to turn our graveyard online. We've got Dawson of Perfection, which hopefully allow us to uh, build up some tokens. And we got Brainstorm and two Fetch Lands, uh, which is a very nice thing to see. So opponent's going to be on the place. We'll let, let them get this game started. And uh, yes, welcome. Hope you're excited. Should be a good matchup. McCrick versus Azor. Um, should be pretty good. We got heavy control versus fast mana and life loss. Uh, we're in for a treat. So uh, we're playing Azor, the Lawbringer or the Banhammer. Uh, whenever Azor enters the battlefield, each opponent can't cast instant or sorcery spells uh, during that player's next turn. Then whenever Azor attacks, you may pay uh, Sph Sphinx Revelation mana. If you do, you gain X life and you draw X cards. So, ooh, running a Monastery Mentor. Um, that is very nice. So, uh, let's go Windswept Heath. Let's go and grab ourselves a Tundra. I think that'll be good. And then we'll go for Brainstorm. That way it does allow us next turn to, um, we can you know kind of shuffle some stuff away. For the, ooh, Mana Crypt. <laughs> Yes. Um, and Prison in the Moon is actually going to be a really good option for Crick because Mono Black has a very hard time uh, dealing with Crick. So um, at this point, I think what we put back on top, since we do have Monastery Mentor, I think we just put um, Dawson of Perfection back on top and then Mystic Confluence back on top. Yeah, that's fine. And then uh, anything else, just in case we're running into some hand disruption... No, well, let's pass the turn, because whenever we cast a knot, that'll at least allow us to get an extra Monastery Mentor token. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll just pass the turn. So, uh, play against Crick, Son of Yagmoth. Uh, lifelink, for each black mana symbol in a cost, you may pay two life rather than pay that mana. Uh, whenever you cast a black spell, put a plus one counter on Crick, Son of Yagmoth. So, we cover both commanders. Um, we'll give a shout out to our sponsors in just a second. Um, let's go. Yeah, I think I kind of like running into... Dawson of Perfection again. So let's just go and lead off with Planes and then uh, pass the turn. We'll go for Monastery Mentor next turn and then anything else, pass the turn over to our opponent. So I uh, did cover both commanders. Let's give a quick shout out to our sponsors, MTGO Traders. If you want to head over to Azor's Law Office, let's say you're injured by a big rig like Jim Adler. Uh, head over to MTGO Traders. That's where he has his law office set up. He'll make sure he fights for every penny that you deserve. Uh-oh. Uh, Necropotence. Okay. All right, well, well, yeah, we, we've got a good hand. We can do something on this. Yeah, if we had gone for Mana Crypt, that would have kept us open on Supreme Will. That's a bummer. Yep, that happens, though. They're going to get down Necropotence. Uh, if they draw a bunch of cards, we, we've we still got some stuff that we can do. We've got Imprisoned in the Moon on Necropotence. In fact, we're going to let them kind of churn through this one. Um, yeah, I guess that Sequencing Error, you know, if we knew Necropotence was coming down, we would have played it differently, but... Um, you know, if they just end up going for like an artifact or something like that, then we're still in a pretty good spot. But I still I still like doing this. So, all right, so we run into that Dawson of Perfection. Uh, let's go Scalding Tarn. Uh, let's crack Scalding Tarn, and then we'll go and grab another, uh, probably grab Hollowed Fountain. I think at this point, we're going to go ahead and shock this one in. Yeah, let's do that. All right, we're going to pay two life. Uh, let's go for Monastery Mentor. And then we're going to go for Mana Crypt. That way we can at least cash in a little bit of extra, uh, get the Monk Token on the battlefield. Uh, with Necropotence, it's not going to be a lot of fun to play against. But at this point, if they go for Crick, we want to use, I want to try to use Imprison the Moon on Crick because that's going to get rid of them being able to cash anything out. And the other thing is, if we're building tokens, um, if they get too aggressive with Necropotence, if you get too aggressive with Crick, I've done this a lot where I'm trying to record with Crick, I uh, I get too aggressive with my life total, um, that might allow us to kind of edge the game out and win. So we'll kind of see how they decide to play this Necropotence. Because, you know, if we just go Monastery Mentor, and then we just leave up Supreme Will, we'll leave, we've got uh, Mystic Confluence now, um, you know, we can build up these Monk Tokens pretty nicely. So I think that's what we might end up doing. So we'll see what they end up doing in Necropotence. But... Like it. If you haven't seen my Crick videos, one of the things that you can do with Crick is you don't have to be aggressive with the life total. Once you get your mana down, um, you know, you've kind of gone past the point to where you need to get Crick down. And, you know, especially if they're going to be going for the Necropotence line of play. So I'm um, just going to choose Tails on this Mana Crypt trigger. One, the flip. We are one for one on those Mana Crypts. And then we run into Delay. So I think, yeah, I think this sounds pretty good. So if we end up going in Prison in the Moon, that still leaves up Delay. Yeah, I like that. So let's go for... Oh, excuse me. An Imprisoned in the Moon cannot target an enchantment. <laughs> what am I thinking? All right, that will not work that way. So um, we do have Delay. We have Snapcaster. We can't go for Azor just yet. So let's do this. Let's just go and push in with a Monastery Mentor and the Monk Token. 
Yeah, that'll be good. So we'll push in. Uh, we have Mystic Confluence that we can actually end up going for to cash in some card draw. And we'll just kind of see what they end up going for. You know, we've got Delay. We've got Supreme Will. Um, we have some answers. So even if they're cashing in all this card draw from Necropotence, we can just kind of slow roll this game out and uh, try to get the game from there. Um, but yeah, if you haven't seen us, I think, no, we covered MTGO Traders. All right, so shout out to Inkgaming.com. You can use coupon code JOLT. And then also, I started a Patreon. So if you'd like to contribute to the Patreon, there's a link down in the description below. Um, and if you can't do that, hey, tell somebody about the channel. So there we go. Now it's officially free time. Let's have some fun. Um, Ponus, yeah, I'm very rit ritualistic in my videos. Like, if I, it bothers me if I forget to do certain things. So we've got Bantu's Monument. Um, that's going to give them a reduced cost. Do we want to delay on this or even potentially go for Supreme Will for that three mana just to build up our to uh, Monk Token board state? I feel like at this point, yeah, that's going to be the best. So let's go and counter target spell. Yeah, because like I mentioned, we, we get these monk tokens down, um, even if this necropotence is really good, once you end up getting these monks going, it's going to be pretty hard. And also with this Azor of, uh, this build of Azor, this is not really a, we need to get Azor down, keep blinking Azor to make sure that they can't cast an instant or sorceries. This is basically just blue-white control. So once we have something established on the battlefield, um... That's really going to help us kind of push this game to where we can swing in and attack them. But what I was laughing about at the beginning of the video, um, if you're not from Texas, or at least from the Dallas, Houston, or Austin area, um, there's a, a, a lawyer called Jim Adler. And um, he's just look it up on YouTube. And whenever I think about Azor the Banhammer, I think about Jim Adler because he, he like yells in his commercials and he's like got a hammer and he's going to fight big rig companies for you. So if you're injured by a truck, call him. If you're ever, yeah, that's, that's like literally his big, his billboard is, if you're injured by a big rig, call me. And so um, it just makes me laugh. So look his videos up. And then like the other thing is like he's on Spanish TV too. And, um, you know, not that I'm hating on his Spanish, but when people speak Spanish and they give no accent, like they, they give no thought into like actually pronouncing. <laughs> I'll give his example of it here in a second. Let's get through our turn. So, um, but anyway, it wouldn't be an Azor video if I didn't give a shout out to Jim Adler, uh, the Texas Hammer. So uh, we're going to choose Tales on this Mana Crypt trigger. Yeah, look it up. Look it up on YouTube. You'll enjoy it. All right, so we run into Island, uh, which is pretty good. So let's go for Island. <sighs> And so we can imprison in the moon. That'll get prowls. That'll get rid of relentless dead. And that'll clear the way for us to swing in and still keep us open on delay. Yeah, I kind of like that. All right, so let's do that. Uh, that's going to be one, two. Um, that's going to go imprison in the moon on relentless dead. We could do that on coffers, but they don't have Urborg out there. And it's really not that, not that bad. So let's go and always yield to this mentor trigger. Uh, yield to these prowess triggers. Yield to that bad boy right there. And then we're going to make sure that Relentless Dead goes into the moon <laughs> and then swing in with the crew. Yeah, I like that. So let's go and push in. And that's going to be three. We could Snapcaster Brainstorm. But if our opponent's banking on a board wipe, I like holding on to delay. That, that I feel that's pretty good. So, all right, so we're going to knock them down to 13. And then, like I mentioned, you know, with this Azor deck, you know, if we get down Monastery Mentor pretty early, we just start chipping away at our opponent's life total uh, slowly by slowly. And then we can just, you know, bounce back with Dawson and Perfection, even if we don't want to counter that board state. So, but anyway, back to Jim Adler. Um, one of the things that he does do is he has his normal, he always yells. He's like, injured by a big rig called Jim Adler, the Texas Hammer. And it's like... Very like like his commercials are cousins to monster truck commercials like that are coming to your local stadium for your city. And so but when he does Spanish commercials, he's always like, yo, soy el abogado. <laughs> yo, soy el abogado, Jim. I mean, like he does no pronunciation and it drives me nuts. And so anyway, let's just. Just have some fun. If you want to go down a little hole, just look at Jim Adler things. And the other thing about Jim Adler is that, you know, he's been around since I was a little kid. You know, I watched TV during the summer, and I just remember thinking, like, God, I don't want this guy hanging around anymore. Um, I think we delay on this one. Because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And if they swing in, yeah, I think that's going to be a good option. Yeah, I think we might as well just go and delay on that. Because we want this this board clear. Uh, that's going to give us an extra monk token. We actually Mystic Confluence to where we can return. We can just cash in some card draw off that. So I think I kind of like that. Uh, but yeah, so he's been doing commercials since I was little. I remember seeing them during daytime TV. And um, 
I remember thinking, well, and it just popped in my head one day. I was like, you know what? I get to grow up in a world where Jim Adler's not yelling at me to call him for big truck things, injuries. And, uh, and then, like, a couple years ago, his son is a lawyer. And, you know, he's out there. He's got that same gross, slick back hair. And he's like, call me. I'm Jim Adler's son. I mean, like, I'm just like, oh. All right. So we're going to have to <laughs> live through this again. So there we go. But anyway, so we've got a bunch of monk tokens on the battlefield. I've uh, got four of them. Let's see if we can close it out next turn. Um, even our, our opponent's tapped out. And if they're just going to necropotence all the way down to 10, I mean, because we've got yeah, we've got, we just Dawson, or we just basically go for Mystic Confluence, we've got it. Or if we just wanted to Snapcast or Brainstorm, that would be a, almost a better value play for us to go for. So, um, let's go and go for this Mana Crypt Trigger. We're going to choose Tails on this one. While on the flip, we are two for three on those Mana Crypt Triggers, I think. And Snapcaster, Brainstorm, yeah, let's let's go for it. Um, let's go Snapcaster. Uh, that's going to be one, two. We're going to have Snapcaster enter the battlefield. Let's go for Brainstorm. It's going to allow us to dig just a little bit deeper. Hopefully we run into a blue source. That'll leave us open on um, mana, but I think we'll be able to get it with the prowess triggers anyway. So um, get the prowess, prowess, prowess with the whole crew. Get an extra monk token. We're going to dig three cards deeper into our library. Pull for tomorrow, O-ring, and a gilded lotus. Yeah, I guess at this point we just end up putting... Um, pull from... We'll put gilded lotus on top and then pull from tomorrow. Um, that's going to put us at... Yeah, they're tapped out. So while we have that last mana floating, we're still going to go for O-Ring just in case our opponent's got something. So let's go ahead and O-Ring. That'll still give us the extra prowess, too. That way, if they've got, um, you know, whatever that is, you may pay X life and counter or kill a creature or something like that instead of paying the mana cost. So it also trigger the prowess, which is pretty good. So we're going to have O-Ring enter the battlefield. Uh, let's have O-Ring finally hit that Necropotence. Uh, that's going to get rid of uh, Necropotence. It's going to allow us to swing in with the crew. But uh, this should be a good game uh, once we get this going. So there we go. Swing in. Uh, got a lot of monk damage coming across. And uh, that's pretty much what this deck wants to do. You know, you can see we didn't get down Azor. We didn't get a lot of Sinks Revelations going. But um, we were able to get down Monastery Mentor. Um, let our opponent pay a bunch of life with um, Necropotence. And then just uh, kind of just slowly chip away at our opponent's life total. So if you enjoyed the, the video and you enjoyed Jim Adler, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye. Welcome to Azor, the Banhammer. As far as opening hand goes, yes, I, oh, this is good. Uh, we don't have a lot of card advantage, but uh, we do have Remand. We have Arcane Denial. We've got double like premium white removal spells, and we've got Imprison in the Moon, uh, which is going to be a wonderful option for Karametra. So um, I will definitely keep this opening hand. All we need to do is hit a couple fast uh, mana rocks, and uh, we'll be good to go. So um, let's go ahead and lead off with... Actually, I kind of like leading off with Halmar Depths because we do have a fetch land, so I'm kind of like... A little bit of a pseudo brainstorm action. That's why I run Halimar Depths is for the off chance that we have Halimar Depths and a Fetch Lane because it feels really good. Um, so let's put, um, it's going to be Sea Chrome Coast, Lightning Greaves. <laughs> put those on top of our library. I guess, in, yeah, actually kind of okay with that. We, we've got a lot of stuff we can we need to do. So and we'll put Lightning Greaves on top. Let's put, um, we have Arcane Denial and Reman that we probably want to end up going for. So let's put uh, Tundra on top, and they'll put Sea Chrome Coast on top. And then uh, anything else, we're going to go pass turn over our opponent. We're playing Azor the Band Hammer. Injured by a big rig, call Azor. He's got your back. The Texas Hammer. Uh, flying whenever Azor <laughs> enters the battlefield. Each of, that's Jim Adler, the Texas Hammer. Look him up. Um, I've talked about him in another video, so if I end up splicing these together, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. But if I don't splice them together then go look up Jim Adler, uh, the Texas Hammer, on YouTube. You can see his commercials. Pretty cool. Uh, whenever Zor enters the battlefield, each opponent can cast instant or sorcery spells during that player's next turn. Then whenever Zor attacks, you may pay Sphinx Revelation mana. If you do, you gain X life and you draw X cards. So let's go and draw into that Sea Chrome Coast. And then that'll keep us open on Reman, which will be a pretty good option. Yeah, I think I kind of like that. So uh, let's have Sea Chrome Coast enter the battlefield. And then uh, anything else, pass the turn over to our opponent. Do, actually, do we want to... No, I kind of like this. I got I like Remand on whatever three mana spell to go. If we can catch Cultivate, that sounds pretty good. And even going for Swords to Plowshare on Leaf Gilder, just kind of cut them back on mana. Sounds like a pretty good plan. We might end up going for that. Uh, we're playing against Karametra, God of Harvest Moon. Uh, Indestructible Devotion 7 uh, turns into a creature. Then whenever you cast a creature spell, maybe search your library for a forest card. Uh, yeah, let's go Remand. 
That'll be a good option. This could basically just be a two mana draw card counter spell, which I will take that. So, but it sends it back to their hand, and uh, we can actually go for Arcane Denial for next turn. So let's get that commander box popped out and uh, pass the turn over to our opponent. Now, if we end up going, they have to have a land for the turn. So let's do this. Let's go Swords to Plowshare on Leaf Gilder. It's going to be one white mana. If they don't have a land, then we're in a pretty good spot. Um, and then let's go for Tundra. Yeah, that'll be good. All right, so we'll go for Tundra. Um, then anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn over to our opponent. So we did cover both commanders. Uh, Care Metro grabs a land. I think I finished it. But um, it's officially free time. Almost free time. Let's give a quick shout out to our sponsors, MTGO Traders. If you are injured by a big rig, a magic big rig, let's say somebody crewed up a big rig and hit you in a game of commander. Um, let's go Arcane Denial. Just want to get this commander tax going pretty bad. And uh, we're going to counter Kara Metra. It's going to send her back to the command zone. And uh, then we can go for Temple of Enlightenment. We've got Imprisoned in the... Actually, if we want to imprison in the Moon on um, Ancient Tomb, that'll really slow them down on mana. I think I kind of like that. So I uh, was cashing the card draw from Arcane Denial. Uh, Arcane Denial. So we got uh, Scalding Tarn. And then we run into play. I think I like doing that. So let's go to Imprisoned in the Moon. Oh, we almost targeted our Halmar Depths. That wouldn't have been good. So we're going to target um, Ancient Tomb. It's going to make it just a colorless land. Uh, let's go for a Temple of Enlightenment. Get the Scry going, the Scurry, the Fever, the Insanity, the Descent into Madness. And, ooh, Monastery Mentor. Uh-huh, putting that on top. Um, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn over to our opponent. So... Beautiful turn. The sequencing was really nice on that. Um, but yeah, check out MTGO Traders. Also, shout out to InkGaming.com. Check out my merch booth. Go over there. Type in Jolt539 to see it. Or use coupon code Jolt for 10% off anything off the website. And uh, last but not least, I started a Patreon. So if you'd like to contribute to the Patreon, there's a link down in the description below. Get your name at the beginning or the end of the credits or both. Or if you can't do that, hey, no problem. Just tell somebody about the channel. Um, I would greatly appreciate it. So opponent's going to go for uh, Aura Shards. They're finally going to crack the seal on that Imprisoned in the Moon. But at least we got them to chew up a turn. And uh, we can go... I think I still like end up doing this. I like going Monastery Mentor on top. And then Lightning Greaves and then swinging in. I, I think that's a pretty good bet. So um, let's go Monastery Mentor. I want to make sure we get the land down for the turn. So uh, let's go Plains. Let's go for Monastery Mentor. That's going to allow us to go Lightning Greaves. It's going to give us an extra monk token and give us some prowls for Monastery Mentor. So, um, worst case scenario, we're going to get in for three, or we just uh, get a yeah, trade with the Elvish Visionary. So, let's go and get that onto Monastery Mentor. Uh, let's go and push in for three. There we go. All right, and then we'll see if Elvish Visionary wants to block or not. If not, we're going to get in for three, knock him down to 25, and uh, pass the turn. So, and then next turn, we're looking at Zor the Lawbringer. We can cash out some, uh, some Sinks of Revelation from here on out and hopefully kind of refuel our hand. Uh, we've kind of traded some pretty good punches with our opponent. So, um, that's pretty much what this, you know, if you're going to be playing the Banhammer, Jim Adler from Texas... <laughs> <laughs> then this is what you want to do. I uh, keep talking about that because I don't know if this video is going to run long, but I'll, I'll end up, whatever it is, I'll splice them together. But yeah, you want to be like Jim Adler when you're playing Azor the, the Banhammer. You want to be pretty aggressive with this deck. And, you know, when you get in your opponent's face, we got the uh, Prison of the Moon on Ancient Tomb. We forced them to use that Aura Shards trigger on that one. It's just a good feeling. And uh, we got the Commander Tax rolling back up on Care Metra. Um, they had to blast our Lightning Grease, which we're A-OK -okay with that. Um, and also with the Zor, that's going to cut them off any instant or sorcery, which just feels pretty good. So it's going to be another Aura Shards. Yeah, and we don't really run, we do run a lot of artifacts in here. And so this probably, with this Aura Shards just sticking around on the battlefield, we'll probably end up going for um, a Zor just to kind of start cashing out some card draw. Uh, now we do run an Elspeth, which is a pretty good option. I still like going for Azor because that gives us either A, they have to use the spot removal, they've got three cards left in the hand, or they have Oblivion Ring, they have to get rid of Azor, and we really want Elspeth to stick around. So let's do that. So let's go and crack Arid Mesa. Um, let's go and get ourselves a... We don't have basics for that. We could Hollowed Fountain. I guess at this point, we'll just grab a Plains. Yeah, that'll be good. All right, so grab a Plains. That's going to allow us to go for Azor. That's going to be double white, double blue... And uh, double blue on that back end. I have a Zor. 
that's yield to that Azor trigger. This is going to be no instant or sorcery that they can cast during the next turn and then uh, pass the turn over to our opponent. So now if they do a new game on Karametra, we might end up going Path to Exile. Um, typically with Karametra, you want to be able to get down as many creatures as possible and get ahead on mana as quickly as possible. So if we can keep Karametra off the battlefield with a little Path to Exile, we might end up going for that. But um, the way it's looking right, right now, we probably going to end up going for an Azor Sphinx Revelation just to kind of refuel our hands. Um, what we're seeing on top of our opponent's library is uh, some pretty stout stuff so um, in fact if they end up going for that asceticism uh, that will end up cutting us off a uh, path to exile so um, either way I'm kind of liking what's happened so far but uh, yeah we'll probably end up going for ooh memorial protection from black and red so um, the good thing is that this is going to be an attack step with um, Azor so we don't you know we don't have to do you know whenever it deals combat damage we don't have to worry about any of that so but we need to get some card advantage going. If we're going to beat Karametra in this game, we need to get card advantage because they're going to be able to ramp um, as quickly as possible. So, um, But that still leaves us open on Pate. Ooh, and then we run into Force of Will, which is a wonderful thing to have. So let's go Scalding Tarn. Uh, let's go and crack Scalding Tarn. Yeah, we're going to go for the Sphinx Revelation for four. Then, and hopefully we keep our fingers crossed we run into a blue land. That'll be really good. So Prairie Stream. Um, we have two basics, so it's going to enter the battlefield... Yeah, we oh, oh yeah, so that should work. Yeah, there we go. That's perfect. So uh, let's go and push in with Sphinx. We're gonna tap out completely on that. That was just a beautiful top deck with Force of Will. Um, that makes this a lot easier. So let's go and swing in with the Zor the Bane Hammer. Um, let's tap down for the Sphinx Revelation. Okay, so we actually <laughs> we run into um, Force of Will on Force of Negation. So unfortunately, we don't have a blue spell that we can uh, exile, but. Um, We'll make this work, though. I like it. All right, so we did end up trading with Farhaven Elf. Um, that still allows us to just kind of stop whatever big spell they've got, and then we can always follow it up with um, Force of Will next turn. Now, if they do end up getting down something that's not that oppressive, let's say they end up going for Asceticism, they go for that Aura, um, probably going to hold on to Force of Will and Force of Negation. Um, one of the cool things about having both of these in our hand is this allows us to turn after turn to draw life and draw cards with the Zor. Um, that's very much the ban hammer. You know, our opponent's going to have to call Jim Adler. Um, we got injured by a big rig. Uh, they're going to call Jim Adler as we keep drawing cards. So, yeah, uh, we're going to let this go through because... Um, being able to tap out and have an answer for anything with Force of Will and Force of Negation. Um, you know, they've got Aura Shards out there. We don't really have to worry about any of that, that nonsense. So, um, Primordial Sage. Yeah, that's good, because they don't have protection from black and red. Yeah, that, that's going to be a perfect uh, Path to Exile spot. Or we could even go for Elspeth, but I think that's going to leave us on Path to Exile. So... Um, anything else they're not going to be swinging in yeah we can just basically just keep swinging in and the other cool thing is that we can just get some good damage in on our opponent um, do we want to yeah they're tapped out so we can at least uh, monk token block on elvish visionary no excuse me they have flying so we cannot block with monastery mentor and the monk token so that's going to put us down to 25 and um we're not getting in for that damage, but yeah, I think Path to Exile and that Primordial Sage will really stop them getting that card draw. That, that's what we need to end up going for. So um, let's have Marsh Flats enter the battlefield. Uh, let's go and crack Marsh Flats. We're going to grab another dual source just because we have access to all the colored mana. We just want to make sure that's not going to be a problem for us. So let's grab Hollow Fountain. We're going to pay two life. Um, yeah, just right, right off the bat, let's just go for Path to Exile. Oh, no, excuse me. That's going to be asceticism. So... Yeah, I like trading in with with Azor. Yeah, that's going to be good. Let's do that. So let's do that. Let's just go and swing in with Azor. Because we've got active force of will. We have active force of negation. And then we can just tap out and gain some life. Yeah, that's going to be good. So let's go and swing in with Azor. And if they want to double up some of these creatures, um, that's going to be A-OK. -okay. So let's go for Azor, the Lawbringer trigger. That's going to be blue, blue, then white. Click OK. And then that's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, I forgot about the Path to Exile and uh, Primordial Sage with them having the asceticism down. That that will not work out. So uh, we're going to, oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Oh, and actually draw into an actual Sphinx Revelation, too. All right, so we're swinging in for six. Um, we do have Teferi's Protection. That allows us to buy ourselves another turn. And then we do have uh, Stubborn Denial, which is really good. So, all right, so we're going to get rid of that Elvish Visionary. And we've made the land drop for the turn. Yeah, we're just simply just going to go and pass on this one. So we're sitting at 12. We've got a ton of good value stuff in our hand. So uh, let's get rid of Pluto Delta. We're going to get rid of Island. Um, would like to hold on to an extra Island if we can. Um, Stubborn Denial is 
pretty good in a matchup like this, being able to just hit a non-creature spell. I can't really see us going... Oh, my goodness, just have an embarrassment of riches. Yeah, I guess we get rid of Island. We need to get rid of two more cards. Yeah, I think we can get rid of Aetherling. Yeah, and I guess we just get rid of Path to Exile. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd hate to get rid of it, but... um. At this point, we just have no use for it. It's kind of a dead card. Other than us just, like, pumping up one of our, our board state with the monk tokens. Because we've got some good stuff. We've got Force of Will back up. Both of these, we can use, ended up, um, Primordial Sage. I'm going to be able to cash in a card draw. Now, if we can find Return to Dust, that's going to really help us out with Memorial and Asceticism. And we're digging pretty far into our library. So, um, they're going to be able to get down Karametra. Do we want to counterspell Karametra? You know, I think it's okay on the battlefield, because the main thing we want to do is we want to stop any sort of just value threat. And if it's just Karametra, yeah, I think that's okay. So um, that's going to allow them to swing in. Um, the other good thing is with Elspeth, now that they're kind of building up this Elspeth board state, um, they don't have Indestructible. We can actually just end up going for Elspeth and then clearing the board out. That's going to get rid of uh, Primordial Sage and get rid of Karametra and allow us to kind of rebound uh, with the Zor the Lawbringer. So we just might end up doing that. Plus, we're also in a spot where we have Teferi's Protection. That's going to allow us to um, kind of just fog out another turn. So uh, we're in a pretty good position. When you, when you get Sphinx Revelation card draw going, um, it is a very, a very good feeling. Or if we just simply just run into a board wipe. We've got Wrath the God in here, and we also do have Fumigate. So it's another good option. So they're going to have the Karametra. They're going to get a Plains on the battlefield. And if they want to start ramping at this point, yeah, I think that's okay. That's I'd rather much fight on the actual creatures entering the battlefield or digging for something like Return to Death. So I'm just going to let them get this, uh, kind of resolve this turn, and then we'll jump into commentary. Okay, so they're going to be swinging with the entire crew. That's going to be 14 coming across. It's going to put us down to 13, and that will be 6 total commander damage. Yeah, if we hit the... Unfortunately, we discarded both islands. If we hit the land for the turn, which is... All right, disallow. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, I still think we end up going Sphinx Revelation. I mean, not Sphinx Revelation, but I think we just still end up going Elspeth. That's going to clear the board out. It'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And still leave us open on Counterspell? Yeah, that, that'll work out. So um, let's go ahead and go Elspeth, Sun's Champion. That's going to give us a few extra Monk tokens. Uh, oh, let's we'll see if we can dodge that Prowess trigger. Yeah, we will, because that's going to put them at 3, and that's going to be perfect. So uh, get those Monk tokens down. Uh, let's go for Elspeth. We're going to go for the minus 3. Destroy our creatures of power 4 or greater. Uh, that's going to get rid of Karametra. Not Karametra, excuse me. It's Indestructible. It's going to get rid of the Primordium. And then anything that we want to do. We can swing in for a 3. That's going to be 8. Ten. Yeah, so we actually might need to... Yeah, we need to be careful with our life total, so... I was just going to hold back on... The, actually, we we'll, might as well just go and swing in. No, because if we end up swinging in with the Monastery Mentor, they're going to be able to stop at that Reclamation stage. So let's just do this. Let's just go and pass the turn over to our opponent. And then um, next turn, we'll be able to go for the plus one, start to build up a few more creatures. Um, we still have Force of Will that we need to end up going for that hopefully we can kind of stop something. They only got one card in the hand at this point right now. Uh, we did cut off that Primordial Sage ability from them getting that extra card draw. So we're in a pretty good spot. Uh, they're going to swing in. Hopefully we can... Uh, in worst case scenario, we just basically Teferi's Protection next turn. So... That'll end up working out. So they're going to swing in with the entire crew. That's going to be 8, 10. That's going to put us down to 3. And we just need to hit that return to dust. Very, very bad. Oh, actually, they swing in some at Elspeth. So that's going to knock her down to 5. And then let's see what we run into. If there's a pull from tomorrow. Okay. So if we Sphinx Rev, pull from tomorrow for 3. I think that actually works out. So we can either pull from tomorrow for a little bit. And still leave up to Fairy's protection. Yeah, I think this is going to work out. So let's just go and pass the turn to our opponent. We'll be able to go for Teferi's protection next turn. That's going to buy us an additional turn. And that's going to allow us to pull from tomorrow for three, which will hopefully allow us to just dig a little bit deeper. And then we can maybe even Sphinx Revelation, or we can find some sort of answer for asceticism. Yeah, I think that's good. So let's do that. So let's go and pass the turn to our opponent. And they are definitely in top deck mode. So that's going to actually didn't see. I think it was just a forest on top. So let's go for this uh, Teferi's Protection. Let's see if we can't get. Well, actually, either way, they're going to have Vigil. So it's not going to matter. So, all right. So we're going to be swinging with Care Metro. Let's go for Teferi's Protection. 
This is going to give us a few extra monk tokens on the battlefield, which is going to be really nice. And then we can still end up going for a really nice pull from tomorrow. Uh, that's going to allow us to dig three cards a little bit deeper into our library. So let's do that. It's going to be pull from tomorrow. That's still going to give us a few extra tokens too, which is going to be pretty good. Ooh, and then we run into Mana Crypt and then Thought Vessel. Um, so we need to discard a card. I guess at this point, we get rid of Mana Crypt. We could Sphinx. Yeah, actually, I kind of like Sphinx Rev. Let's do that. So um, let's get rid of Thought Vessel. All right, so we're going to get the extra prowess triggers. That's going to allow us to fog out for the turn. Uh, we can still end up going for Mana Crypt. That's going to allow us to go for Sphinx Revelation for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, I'm not going to get hit for any damage. And they have one card in the hand. I forgot what was on top of their library because we can see with Corsair of Crufix. So at least that's going to allow... Oh, and actually with Aura of Silence, that's going to chew up that... Uh... Do we want a Force of Will if they cast an enchantment? Yeah, I think that's going to be good. All right, so we're going to Force of Will on... Um... Oh, and excuse me, with us being phased out, I don't think we can pay our life total. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, I'm trying to click on Force of Will because I'd like to have Force of Will Enchantress, but I don't think we can get it on that one. Okay, so we're going to get a little bit extra life gain off of that. And there's nothing that they can target on us with the Aura Shards. Now, if we rip into Cyclonic Rift, this is, oh, is going to be really good for us. So Archangel, and especially with the Archangel on top, we need to watch out for that. Okay, so Subi Drone drawn to Mana Confluence. Let's go island. So they swing in. Let's say they swing in with the entire crew next turn. Archangel's going to have haste. Uh, whenever you gain life, that's going to be first strike damage. Put a plus one counter on each creature you control. So we're looking at eight. That's going to be 10. And then that's going to be 13. We Sphinx Revelation for one, two, three, four, five, six. That's going to put us up to 11. Okay. Now that we do have force of will to stop Archangel which is going to put it at 10 coming across, which we still need to have because that will end up being flying. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go for Sphinx Revelation. That's going to allow us to gain six. We're going to get a few extra prowess triggers going. Um, let's go and always yield to that trigger. And then we've already hit the land drop for the turn. Uh, let's go and push in with all of the extra monk tokens that we've got. Because either way, they're not going to be able to stop it. So one, two, three, four. Still want to hold on to Monastery Mentor. And what we're hoping for right now is maybe they block with Reclamation Sage or Enchantress. All right, so that's going to get rid of them. And then anything else? No. And if we got down Mana Crypt, that would have made a little bit of difference, but that Aura of Silence is really going to affect us on this one. So um, let's get rid of Mana Confluence. Let's get rid of Mana Crypt. We'll get rid of Chromatic Lantern and Enchantment Spells. Let's get rid of Smothering Tithe, and we'll get rid of Gilded Lotus. So um, let's see how they decide to go for it. More than likely, we're going to see that Archangel come down. Um, that does put us on Force of Will. <laughs> And if you're keeping a score at home, then they're going to be able to swing in with total damage. because That's going to be exactly 10. So we'll kind of see what's happening as far as what we can end up doing. Uh, if I miss the win on this one somewhere along the line, I do apologize. I'm getting to the later end of recording. And so, um, yeah, I still think they're going to be able to get it. So let's go on Exile, uh, Detention Sphere. It's going to be a few extra triggers off this one. Maybe they don't swing in with the crew, but with them having that flying, yeah, it just really hurt that we never hit our return to dust. Or even um, we have Austere Command in here, you know, that's going to allow us to deal with a lot of the enchantments. And so um, looks like they're going to be able to get on this one because they exactly just enough damage coming across. So good game to our opponent. Um, we maybe could have played this one a little bit differently or been blocked a little bit different, but... Um, like I mentioned, a little tired. We're going on about hour three of recording, and typically with long games like this where there's just a lot of moving parts, I, I might miss something. So, But we got to get some good stuff going. We got some Sphinx Revelations happening, and uh, we got to kind of get in our opponent's face with Care Metro. So good game by them. They played this one out beautifully. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.